All right, the last free response question in unit two is a non-calculator question. And uh, we're going to see some of the same things that we saw in the other ones, um, but uh, they'll also be a little added extra. Um, so we have a table that represents P of T, and P of T um, are the number of passengers who have boarded a ship. It is differentiable. Um, T is the number of hours since boarding began. All right, so we're going to find the average rate of change again. So we're going to find the average rate of change using the table on the interval from 1 to 8. And so all the stuff in between 1 and 8 don't matter. Was it before 1? Doesn't matter. We're just going to use those two coordinates. subtract those and divide and we're going to get 99. Now we have a question. Um, I do feel like on the actual test they would want you and they told you in this what you're finding and like what it means. Um, but I feel like they would want you to explain it. I know. Like I said, we 100% have answered the question. They'd be wanted to take a minute um, to write down what 99 is, um, you can, so, um, but we don't have to. Now, I just really think that when you guys take the test, that you, you read the questions super, super closely, because the way they're given the test, they may be checking for a lot of different things, um, in their answers. So just make sure you always answer everything they're asking for. Okay. Um, we are going to write, uh, P prime of 4.5 as a, the limit of a difference quotient. Now there are two things, two different difference quotients. So the first one, I'm going to write like the ones we've already practiced on these free response questions. It would be the limit as t approaches 4.5 of p of t minus p of 4.5 over t minus 4.5. So we already did that on a couple of them. That's fine. Um, the other one, you do not have to write both. You just have to write one of these. It's the one that uses h. On that one, it's the limit as h approaches 0 of p of 4.5 plus h minus p of 4.5 over h. So pick one of those. Know both of them for sure because they might throw in the other one. You never know. Um, but both of these are the limit definition of the derivative. All right, the second part says to use the table um, to approximate p prime of 45. Now, what we would do is the same thing we just did on the previous problem. We're going to do the average rate of change. Um, we just need to make sure 4.5 is in between them. So typically, we would use the two points on each side. Okay, and then we're coming back to another intermediate value theorem question to practice. So we have these passengers in the ship still. Um, we want to know if there's a time between 3 and 6 where there are 500 passengers on the ship. So logically, yeah, we can show that, but we have to prove it using calculus and justify it. Um, so the first thing we have to 
justify or verify is that p of t is continuous and it is um, because p of t is a differentiable function then p of t is continuous so we would make a statement that says that then we would need to find uh, p of 3 and p of 6. Again, that's not hard. We just look at the table. All right, then we would make a statement that 500 falls in between those two. So we would say p of 3 is less than 500 is less than p of 6. And then I would use their words. So we're figuring out, must there be a time? So I would start with by the intermediate value theorem. I'm going back and looking at their words. Four, three is less than or equal to t is less than or equal to six, at which p of t equals five hundred. So going back and using their words is a good way to make sure you don't leave anything out. But they didn't say anything about the intermediate value theorem in the problem. That is up to you to write down. And include it if you want to get all your points. Okay, so we have a new function. So the total number of gallons of water used by the passengers on the ship is modeled by g. And g is this function. It's not too crazy. Um, and t is the number of hours since boarding began. And we are going to find g prime of four, which is the rate at which passengers use water in gallons per hour. Now later, pretty soon, I guess a couple of units away from this one, um, you will have to tell what g prime represents. So um, we'll come back to that and review it, but hopefully you do remember that. So before I find g prime, um, I am going to rewrite G in a way that's going to make it easier for us to find it. Um, so I would say that t, the square root of T is T to the 1 half. And then I would go ahead and multiply those together by adding the exponents. So when we do that, we don't have to worry about doing the product rule. Which I know the product rule isn't difficult, but this is going to be so much easier because to find g prime, we just have to do the power rule. Now, I feel like they're gonna want to see what you're actually multiplying. I don't know for sure, um, but I would write that. Because you might get a point for this, even if in the next step you, you mess up on that multiplication. So you do get 180 when you multiply those together. T to the 1 half is the square root of T. All right, and then G prime of 4. We are going to just put 4 in. So that is 180 times 2, which is 360. All right, and let's just go ahead and write down what that means at the time. <laughs> t equals 4 hours. Passengers use water at a rate of 360 gallons per hour. So remember whenever we are finding the derivative, 
and it, if the original function was gallons, yeah, gallons of water used, um, when we found the derivative, you're basically dividing by the independent variable with your unit. Um, so that gallons becomes gallons per hour. And then if you guys remember when we do the integral, you're multiplying by that unit. Um, so it, it changes things. Um, but anyway, we'll, we'll review a bunch of stuff.